Hello there my fishy friends, my name is Peter and today is part two of my educational series about coho fishing. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through the types of rods and reels that you can use for coho and actually these are the same rods and reels that you can use for any of our salmon species. I am going to be pretty quick about it because there are so many brands out there, you know, I, I'm not going to push any one brand or any one anyone thing, I'm just going to explain to you your options and uh, what I think about each one. And uh, Fishing with Rod really has a lot of great videos about gear and setups and uh, I encourage you to browse his channel if you want additional information. So I'm going to try and make it quick. I think the most important part of my fishing gear for the Vetter is actually a landing net. So I like a really long landing net, like a long handled one so that I can, I can reach out and you know if I'm using a, a long rod it can reach way out and grab that fish single handed. I don't need anybody else to net for me. And I also like that this has a shallow bag. So you can get your landing nets with deep bags for catching stuff off of boats, or you can get your nets with shallow bags for catching stuff in rivers. And so a shallow bag doesn't get hung up on the rocks and sticks in the river, and is definitely the way to go. Uh, a fishing net I think is super important because it decreases your amount of time that you're fighting a fish. So you actually end up landing more fish. Every second that, that fish is on the line, it has a chance to get away. So if you can cut your fight down, down, down by two minutes, you have a way better chance of landing the fish. And the other important thing is, with a landing net, you're not damaging the eyes of the fish. You're not letting the bruise, fish bruise itself by banging against rocks. So it's better for you. You're going to catch more fish. And it's better for the fish because they stay safe. And sometimes if you're new to the river, maybe you're not sure if you caught uh, a, a jack chinook or if you caught a big coho and if you're allowed to keep the fish or not the net allows you to keep that fish safe and in the water while you know you call somebody else over who knows more than you do identify that fish and uh, and do it right you don't want to get caught with an illegal fish and you don't want to kill a fish that's protected right so uh, a landing net to me is really important 100 percent i can land a fish without a net but it's more difficult and your landing ratios decrease um, i think more people should bring them to the to the river but that's my two cents on that. So let's talk about rods and reels. If you follow my channel already, you uh, probably know that I fish a center pin like 90% of the time. So a center pin is this kind of setup. It's ideal for float fishing row, but it's also kind of expensive and it's kind of an advanced reel. Like it takes a while to learn how to cast this. And really, realistically, to be honest, there is no advantage to having a center pin. Like, realistically, other, other rods and reels would do exactly the same job. It's just a center pin. It's kind of a, it's a really beautiful way to catch a fish and fight a fish. There are no gears, there is no drag. It's just you and the fish. You're using your fingers to slow down the reel. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, if you spend time on the Veta River, you're like, oh, the guys with the center pin, they're catching all the fish. It must be that setup. Well, it's not really that. It's more that those guys with the center pins have probably spent 10 or 20 years on the river and they've upgraded and it's, you know, to the advanced reel, to the advanced method. And they've gotten bored with just regular fishing. So center pin, I would absolutely recommend you try center pin, but it's not really a beginner reel. If you're just starting out on the river, stick with something a little more user friendly. So. Um, yeah, center pins. This is kind of an expensive one. I bought it used, uh, but this reel is 500 bucks used. So it's about 750 new. Um, you know, that's also kind of a barrier for a lot of people. But um, if you're really into fishing, center pin, 100% my favorite way to catch fish. The other thing that you see a lot on the Vetter are people using bait casters. So this is a bait casting reel. You hold it upside down. A bait casting rod has this little trigger on the back that's how you know it's a bait casting roll rod and it's designed to be used upside down so this reel um, you see a lot of people with these big bait casting reels and this is a good way to drift fish as well you can you can when it's free running you can you can slow down the lines with just your thumb and you can get a really nice drift on your setup so it is it is a nice way to fish you get a really fast retrieve you get a long cast if you need it 
but I would say that these big bait casting reels are kind of a carryover from when the Fraser was open all the time and people are using the same rod for casting super far on the Fraser River and you know they use the same reel bring it to the vetter and use it there for a small tributary you really don't need the high line capacity of a big bait casting reel so I would say if you're just going to fish the vetter you're better off with a low profile bait caster so a, bait, a low profile is just a smaller version and there's plenty of line on here for any situation you would encounter on a small river like this uh, I actually use this one it's just, it's I've got it on a small rod and I use it for twitching jigs I don't I don't use this little guy for for floating row and, and beads but most people use these for floating row and beads it, it can do both I've been trying to learn how to twitch jigs with it and it's not ideal actually um, about half the time I bring this rod about half the time I bring a, just a little spin casting setup so this I can also toss spoons and spinners with it but really a, a, a low profile reel with maybe like a nine foot to ten foot rod is kind of versatile you can do the odd bit of casting spoons and stuff if you get good with this reel uh, but it's um, yeah what can I say I, I would recommend a low profile reel over uh, a big standard bait casting reel so um, they're not too expensive this reel was about 90 or 100 bucks I don't remember exactly and it's just on a nine foot Claris rod so yeah that's that's all I have to say about that uh, Rodney with fishing with the rod he has some really good videos out about these reels and then I find that rod and reel setups kind of vary by a region up here on the vetter most of the experienced anglers are using either bait casters or they're using center pins but if you go south of the border to Washington State most of the guides and experienced anglers are actually using a spin casting setup with braid so it really varies by a region there is no wrong answer I myself used just a regular spin casting setup for catching salmon probably for the first six years on the vetter uh, that's what I grew up using I used it all my life and it's totally 100% doable you can get a beautiful drift just by you just end up having to open and close your bail a lot like as you're drifting down you open your bail you feed a bit of line close it open it it doesn't get you a beautiful drift but it will do the job so that's it for reels that those are your options if you're just starting out which most people who are clicking on this video are probably just starting out they want some advice first of all go to your local shop okay uh, Amazon it's not going to be there at 7 in the morning to reprint your license. Amazon does not raise money for habitat conservation. Amazon's not going to be there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when you run out of hooks and need to go grab some more. So do what you can to support these local shops. I don't work for Fred's. I don't even get a discount there. Um, you know, we have Pacific Rivers. We have um, so many good shops. So, uh, you know, the... the Pacific Angler in Vancouver is awesome. Matt Sharp does a beautiful weekly fishing report. Uh, so many good shops. Please support them. Do what you can. And it's a totally selfish thing. You, we need those shops to be around so that you can get the good advice when you need it. The guys at Fred's over the years pretty much taught me like half the stuff I know about salmon fishing. You know, I go in there, buy a little something, get a little advice. Just do that once a week and. Uh, you, you learn so much those guys know the river they know their stuff so that's my two cents I'm not pushing you in any one direction but it's something to think about when you're buying a spin casting reel I buy heavy ones so this is like a 6,000 series or 5,000 series I buy the heavy reels because they have heavy drag you certainly don't need a big reel for fishing this river you don't need the line capacity but the bigger reels tend to have heavier drag components and if you buy a light and cheap reel the chinooks and the other big salmon in the river will just take it apart they will strip the drag components right out that reel will come apart so if you're buying a reel my recommendation is buy a fairly heavy one fairly chunky one and go with a good brand like I've been really happy with these pen fierce and pen battle reels they last 
on average probably three or four years of river fishing. I started fishing this river with a $50 rod and reel from Canadian Tire and that didn't even last a season. The, the Chinooks just took it apart. Everything was stripped out and falling apart in no time. The rod broke. Like it just, um, if you're going for salmon, it's worth it to buy slightly nicer gear. If you can't afford it, buy some used gear. And then if you decide salmon fishing is not for you, you can sell it for the same price and get your money back. Rods. Uh, let's talk about rods. The most popular rod around here for float fishing row is a 10 foot 6, medium, medium heavy, and a medium action. So it's kind of like you want your line capacity on the rod. So every rod on the side will, will give you a line capacity. Let's see what this one is. Um, so it'll, it'll give you a line weight. So here, this is a, a line size is 12 to 20. You want to be in that sort of 15 pound range for size. That doesn't mean you have to run a 15 pound line or 20 pound line. You can run what you want, but that's kind of what the rod is designed for. You want a rod that's not a trout rod. You want one that's designed for salmon fishing and you want your line weight to be in that sort of 12 to 15, 12 to 18, 12 to 20 pound range. The line I use on pretty much all my reels is a 20 pound Maxima Ultra Green. Uh, if you're just starting out, you might even want to go a little bit heavier, go with like a 25 pound line. I use mono. Monofilament line is less sensitive, it's stretchy. And that's what I like about it. So monofilament is like a shock absorber. When you're fighting a big fish, like fighting on a bungee cord, your rod is cushioning the fish and your line is cushioning the fish. So what happens is you have less of a chance of that fish getting away. It's, it's getting lots of shock absorption so you don't break your leader, you don't lose your fish. And that's important because when you're fighting big fish on a barbless hook, you need to keep a lot of pressure on them and a lot of constant pressure and so you end up reeling them fairly hard where in our area you're never allowed to use barbless, uh, barbed hooks. So they have to be barbless so you end up putting quite a bit of pressure on the line and that's why in our region people generally use fairly heavy gear so that you can keep a lot of pressure on the fish and it doesn't get away on you. Uh, as far as terminal gear, I was going to do a separate video but again, fishing with rods done it like 10 times so you know, I, I don't feel like I need to rehash all that. For dri I catch about 80% of my fish floating row, the rest I catch either floating beads or twitching jigs, throwing spoons, throwing spinners. So yeah, that's, uh, I use 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. So fluorocarbon sinks and it's very transparent. The fish in our river see a lot of fishing pressures so they get very shy. I would highly recommend getting fluorocarbon leader. It's worth the money. If you're on a budget, buy fluorocarbon mainline like the, you know, Invisi X um, from Seaguar is a good one. You get 200 yards for the same price as the leader material you get like 100 yards or 80 so if you're on a budget recommend going to fluorocarbon it's well worth it. it it's you need it to catch these fish so my float i get all my floats from the river i just fish whatever i'm not picky about the float weights i use kind of a combination of little egg weights or i use pencil lead on the line then i put a swivel with a clasp on it so you can see here I don't know if it focuses on there. So a swivel clasp so that I can change out leaders really quick. I pre-tie my leaders with a little swivel on there so it only takes me like 20 seconds to change out my line. Your leader should be pretty short. So I like about this length, which is about 16, 16 to 20 inches. When your stuff is floating down the river, your leader's kind of going here and there. The fish bites it. And by the time your leader straightens out, that's when your float goes down. And so if your leader's too long, by the time that leader straightens out and you see your, your bobber do something, the fish is already let go. So that's a great reason for keeping your leader short. That way you can see and feel the bite. Let me show you one more terminal setup. This is the one on my center pin. That's what I was fishing today. The other rod was set up for my kids. So here is a, it's a slip float. So I have a couple of float stops on here and the float slides so that I can fish deeper spots 
without having the, the float in the way. A little bit of pencil lead. So pencil lead slides on the line, then there's a little bead to protect the knot. Swivel snap, swivel, leader. And my leader, this one is a, it's a little bead pegged just above the hook. And I use number one or number two hooks and they should be salmon hooks. You can't fish with trout hooks because they're just not sturdy enough. I, I see a lot of people start with really big hooks. The fish in this river are kind of gear shy. They see so much gear. If you fish with a big hook, it has two disadvantages. One, the big hooks actually bend open easier than the small hooks because there's a lot more distance between the tip and the shank and the fish gets a lot more leverage on it. And you'll bend the big hooks open much easier than the small hooks. The other thing is if you foul hook a fish, a little hook is gonna leave a very small injury where a big hook is gonna put a big hole or a big cut in that fish. So I, I like number one hooks. Number one is number one. Sometimes I go down to number two, especially if I'm fishing small beads. Sometimes I go up to one aught if I'm fishing big balls of row because you want that hook sticking out, but definitely not like big hooks that um, damage the fish more, but also you'll catch less fish. So. I think that's got the gear covered. I hope this helps you out in some small way. My next video, I'm going to go over the reasons that coho salmon bite. And uh, that should be a little bit more interesting than the gear. Thanks for watching. See you next time.